What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be doing a gameplay with the Pink Diamond Zach Levine card. Sorry I was a little bit late to this, but it took ages for these cards to come up on um, PC, and literally the first Jokic finished like 5 minutes ago. So, we have got all of these cards now, so premium, moments of the week, and of course we're locking in. Why, why else do you buy all these cards? These cards are all fairly bad like fournier and hunter are all right mitchell is buying average yoke which is bad there is no reason to get all these cards if you're not gonna lock them in for a zach levine who apparently is like from what i've heard anyway is the best card in this game or one of the best cards in this game so zach levine so yeah it's the second of the pink diamond rewards we have gotten from moments of the week i think the first one we got was lillard Zach Levine's wearing Dame Fives? Okay. Again, I have no idea what shoes Zach Levine wears, so I don't know why I'm confused at that. So, yeah, we managed to get a Zach Levine card. So, let's see where I'm going to put him in. I'm going to put him in here for Bradley Beal. I'm also going to put in... Who do I want to use the point? Bar oh no, I'll put in Petri start. No, I'll put in Baron Dave start at the point, and I'm going to put in Bradley Beal to two off the bench, not James Harden. And go Bradley Beal off the bench. So the team we're running with is Baron Davis, Zach Levine, Kevin Durant, Rashad Lewis, and Tim Duncan off the bench. We've got Jeff Petri, Bradley Beal, Paul George, Hito Turkaloo, and let's take him out of the squad. And put in Amari Stadamar. Vucevic, James Harden, and LeBron running off the bench. So anyway, now we're gonna go over the stats of Zach Levine. So Levine has got 97 offense, 91 defense overall, which may not look the best, but trust me, this card is really, really good. He's got eight Hall of Fame badges. These Hall of Fame badges are volume shooter, tireless scorer, or tireless shooter, um, green machine, clutch shooter, showtime, fast break finisher, contact finisher, relentless finisher, and well, 26 gold badges. Catch and shoot, lob city finisher, you got clamps, which is huge. Tireless defender, steady shooter, which isn't great, but sure look. Um, you can't have everything. Range extender gold is huge as well. He's also got quick draw gold, quick first step gold, flexible release, difficult shots. So, yeah, overall he's a uh, should be a really really good card. Stats wise, dunk tendency and flashy dunk obviously 100. He's got a driving layup 96, mid range 92, three ball 95, and 97 driving dunk. Um. Ball handle of 86, perimeter defense of 85, steal of 84, 90 speed, 90 acceleration, 97 speed of ball, 85 lateral quickness. So, yeah, he should be quite good. And, uh, yeah, um, sticking with the Mike Corzemba meme, Zach Levine is Steph Curry with a 40 inch vertical. <laughs> That's pretty much what he is. He's a bigger Steph Curry. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, now let's go on to the hot zones and release, then we're going to get on to the game. So Levine has got hot zones everywhere on the floor. Release. I remember when I was using Zamatis, I was like, what have they done with Levine's release? Like his release, Levine's release has been notoriously slow in 2K and it's been the case for years. And Levine's release this year is absolutely so quick. So, so quick. And one player I'm definitely not used to using is Levine, but should be quite good. And yeah, there's no reason. Hits an arrow three there. There's no reason why he shouldn't be one of not the best card in the game. Let's test out the leaner. Because we all know how important the leaner is. It's no separation, but good timing. Yeah, so no separation, but an easy leaner to time. Not the worst in the world. Because leaner... Um, let's say leaners need... You need good timing, but you don't necessarily because... Um, you're only taking from mid this year. You're not taking leaner threes. So the separation isn't as big a deal. Or separation is uh, a lot more of a deal than it was last year but um yeah so again we all know about levine's dunking but levine this levine is a lockdown defender some for some reason as well as being a absolute uh gunner from three so um yeah should be unreal so anyway now it's just green with three and now let's get on to the game Okay, so we are playing as Joe Dumas, Lou Hudson, who's not the worst matchup for him, Jamal Mashburn, Kevin Love, and Karl Malone. Definitely have the advantage here. Okay, let's go. Let's connect. Shoot the leaner. And Zach Levine knocks it down. Let's go. 
Good defense. Let's push it, Levine. Levine burns him, goes right to the basket. Kevin Love basically stops him from scoring. Okay, they leave him wide open, though. And I don't know what this guy's going to expect him to do. Like, he's got, by the looks of it, the fastest crossover I've seen in the game this year. And, okay, this guy, obviously, the way he's playing, he realizes I'm running everything through Zach Levine. But it kind of feels like when he's crossing over that, okay, he's got a really fast crossover. Like, almost Giannis crossover level from NBA 2K19. That could be cheese. That could be super cheese. There we go. That is on, though. That's a wide open shot. Just a poor release. I don't know why I panicked, because he was somewhere in my general direction. Oh, how did I miss that steal? I was waiting for that one. That's a terrible release, but it's a mid-range, so... Yeah, it's going to go in. Okay, once we get the step on him, we're good. Zach Levine with the dunk. We got like eight points in just over two minutes is a really good start for him. Obviously, myself, I've played poor defensively, but Levine individually has been great. That's a slightly early. It's unlucky. The last one he shot was very, which is a much better release than slightly. Slightly shots very, well, as in like they do go in. They go in at a much lower rate than um, very early or very, very late shots. And slightly shots always have the uh, chance at a full white glitch. I don't know if it's like, if it is, it's full of like, I don't know what to cause it, but like there is a specific way the shot meter is that if you can see it like that, you know for a fact the ball is not going in. Unless it's from like way too deep or it's contested. And I'm pretty sure it's something through the steady shooter badge as well, if it's if it's wide open. Okay, that's not a good shot. Let's push it. Levine on the move, not a good release. He hits it. Let's go, Levine with 13 points. He's doing a little bit of everything right here so far. And he quit. Really? Down one, he quit the game? Okay, game number two. We are up against Chris Paul, Vince Carter, Kawhi, LeBron, and White. So, this game here, we definitely have a massive advantage, even more than the last game. Okay, let's get Dwight out of there. Actually, does it even matter? He can attack Dwight and score on Dwight every single time if he wants. This is Zach Levine. All right, that's a dumb shot. Go get the board. Zach Levine comes out with the rebound there. That was nice. Snatch back into an open jumper. Green light. Let's go. He is still killing it right here. Doesn't matter. We ended up, uh, doesn't matter. It took us a good few minutes to find that game. I'd say it was the guts of 10 minutes. That doesn't matter. Zach Levine ending right where he left off that last game. And now he's got his second rebound of the game. Snatch his back. There's two of them on him. Doesn't matter. A little bit of a contest. It does not matter. Zach Levine greens the three-point shot. He is killing it right here. He is absolutely killing it. And they come right down and hit one with Chris Paul. I'm telling you guys, this is the best Chris Paul has been since probably 2K13, maybe. There was one year, it was either like 2K13 or 14, where Chris Paul was good. How we hit that 78% contested shot? Levine is on another level. Levine, probably the best two-guard in the game. I say that confidently because the two-guard is a position where... Where people either use Paul George there, who's probably still... Is arguably the best player to use that position. For me, anyway, Jeff Petrie was my number one, but... I'm probably the only person in the world that thinks Jeff Petrie is better than Terrence Ross. That's just my opinion. But, um, no, without question, Levine is better than Petri. I'm not gonna, I'm not crazy enough to make that argument. As much as I like Jeff Petri, he's not Zach Levine. Short riot out of bounds. There we go. So got a couple of stops, a couple of scores. Maybe we can force this guy to rage quit. And I think I'm gonna go into press as well. And he gets a blow by on Kawhi Leonard with the dunk. And his takeover is sharp. Okay, this is... This is a... Uh, this is not what you expect from Zach Levine. You expect maybe slasher takeover, bump steal. You left CB3 wide open and Chris Paul hits another three-pointer on us. I was about to say, oh, force this guy to rage quit, but even with his weakened team, he's actually put up a good fight so far and Zach Levine walks right down the court and greens a three in his face. 
Like, this is as good a quarter as I think I've played with any player yet this year, and we've only got a four-point lead. A lot of it is just due to me being horrendous on defense, but as you guys know, I'm not very good on this end of the floor. Well, most of the time. When I actually, like, lock in, I'm all right, but uh, most of the time, I'm terrible on defense. So I do let players stay in games they probably shouldn't. Leaner, 71% contested. It's another unbelievably high percent contested shot. Zach Levine with 19 first quarter points here. All right, his bench. He's actually got some nice budget players. Like Terrence Ferguson is really good as a budget player. Like that's actually kind of a usable card. I remember at the start of the year, people were tell calling me crazy being like, I said it from day one. It was like, this card's better than half like the current Amethyst. And the current Amethyst are terrible. People were uh, just overall snobs, like a lot of people are still nowadays. And they were like, oh no, an Amethyst is better than Sapphire. A lot of the time, they're not. <laughs> Especially as current Amethyst start the year. And he's got Emerald D-Wade out there. He gives him way too much space. Full white glitch, get the board, get the board, get the board. Good job, Mari. Probably should have just gone and given it into uh, Amari there with the mismatch instead of taking the leaner with Hito. Sure, right into my hands. Jeff Petri. He's open. That's a terrible shot. Thought he was going to stop in time. It's all good, though. We're going to get back there with Hito. To Beal. Green light. So we've actually managed to get it up to a 10 point lead at the end of the first. We actually started focusing a little bit. And that is a second rage quit from two games. So, yeah, we managed to finish out 10 and 0. And I know it says 10 and 2. If you guys don't remember, there was, I can't remember what gameplay it was. It was literally a case of having to, I had the dashboard out twice in a row because a big thing flashed up on my screen being like, uh, basically it was threatening a ban if I kept falsely reporting people, something like that. It happens, that happened in one time I had to shut down. Like, I can't remember whose gameplay it was, but. I had a win streak on PC continues anyway. You take it's up to well over 30 at this stage, but um, yeah. So Zach Levine, easily the best two guard in the game. Like Beal's really good at the two, and I forgot, completely forgot about him. Beal's really good. Harden, best to be around the one. Paul George and Levine for players that can be around the two is a really close one. And then um, I'm gonna say Levine one, Petri two. Terrence Ross, three. Beal, four. Um, okay, this is going to be a tough one for number five. And I'm going to say number five as Tracy McGrady over Clay Thompson for the reason that, for some reason, Clay Thompson always switches on to the other team's center. It's really weird. And I'm not the only one that's noticed this. People have been posting it on like some of the forums. That's the only reason Clay is not top five. But um, Levine is out in front. He's well, like the fact that I'm even questioning whether he's better than Paul George shows how good this Zach Levine card is. So like, if you're looking at actual rankings of cards, it's between Paul George and Levine for number one in the game right now. Without question, it's between Paul George and Levine. And then number three, I'm gonna say probably Baron Davis. Number four, as crazy as this sounds, I'm gonna put Rashard Lewis at four, and then Tim Duncan at five. But uh, that's my top five anyway. And yeah, they do actually, those top five cover all the positions. So that would be my ideal starting five. Paul George in for Kevin Durant. If I was to put my best possible starting five, it would be this five. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.